Hi guys, today I received my S24 Ultra and uh, already did an unboxing, perhaps you already saw this video and um, I used it for several hours today and I thought I wanted to share my first impressions with you and I used the Samsung Notes app and already got a AI formatted notes that contains all my observations and uh, that's actually quite nice to use the notes app to jot down thoughts and and notes and then be able to let the AI format the whole thing for you. But let's begin. So um, the first surprise was a setting for the always on display and I think let's let's just go to the settings and then I will show it to you. So in order to access this setting you have to go into the settings and then to lock screen and AOD and then you go to always on display and then the setting is when to show. So on the S24 Ultra you have several options here. You have auto, always, tap to show, as scheduled or for new notifications. Um, and the auto function is quite interesting because it says um, it shows the AOD all the time unless your phone detects that it's in a dark place such as a purse, pocket or in a dark room. So this could mean, for example, when I'm sleeping and the phone is at the bedside table and the room is dark, it will not show the always on display. With other phones, I have to kind of uh, create a routine that the always on display is all only active um, before 10 p.m., for example. And this is a new option. In my S23, there is no auto option. You have tap to show, show always, show as scheduled, or show for new notifications. But it's possible that this is due to One UI 6.1 that is running on the S24 Ultra and One UI 6.0 that is currently running on the S23 Ultra. But it's a nice option. Another thing that I really like are the animated wallpapers. So when you open the device, then the wallpaper is animated and this crystal starts to move also when you then lock the device it starts to move and this is a really cool effect i really like this because it fi also fits so well to the to the titanium look of the device and it's a really all in all a really stylish way of animating a wallpaper and that was uh, that was quite surprising didn't saw it before and really like the animated wallpapers then the screen i mean this is a top-notch screen. The screen is really awesome, especially due to the new glass they're using, the Corning Gorilla Glass Armor, which um, reduces glare quite substantially. Um, and you also already saw it in my unboxing where I compared it with uh, the screen of the S23 Ultra. And sometimes the screen looks as if you were looking um, on, a, on a printed piece of paper. Sometimes you have the impression it's kind of colorful e-ink. It's really cool because you don't see any reflections on the screen at a certain um, angles. I mean, you see reflections, especially now with, with the big light source I have here. Uh, in certain angles you see them, but in some angles it's, it's so minimal that you kind of uh, have the impression to, to look, um, look on a piece of paper. Really cool. In general, also the haptics of the device are really nice and I, I like them more than the S23 Ultra because of the titanium. Um, really a nice feeling in the hand. It's kind of, yeah, it gets really warm and sometimes cool to the touch. So it really adapts um, to the environment. That's really cool. And also, I, I really like um, the color of the device. Sometimes it's a... Uh, it's a warm yellow, sometimes it's a, it's a cool gray, de in, 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 dependent on where you uh, have the device. I really like it. Also, the flat screen is really cool. I'm, I'm not using a screen protector because I want to preserve the anti-glare effect of the screen, um, but it could be that I will use some screen protectors in the future, and that for that it's really cool that the display is flat. Then, some impressions about the AI functions. 
The AI, the AI functions are sometimes hit and miss and I definitely need to test more. Um, but especially with regards to photo editing, um, generative fill is sometimes hit and miss. So if you want to erase an object from a photo or want to move it from left to right, then uh, generative fill sometimes does a great job, but sometimes does a horrible job. It either um, kind of smudges the area or it, it inserts something that is, is not fitting. So this is really uh, kind of hit and miss. Also, automatic transcription of um, voice memos and also the translation function, at least in German language, is um, really not that great because um, also the transcription is not accurate and then also the translation will be even uh, less accurate. Um, and um, I, I tried it with ChatGPT, for example, and ChatGPT, the ChatGPT app and the voice interface is much, and I mean much better. It transcribes better, so it listens to you more closely and gets all the nuances of what you are saying. And also trans uh, the translation, it is much better. better. And, and in general, all the most of the AI functions that are built into the device, like for example also note formatting and also um, transcription and translation, um, these are all functions that can be done by, by third-party apps. When you're using Evernote, also Evernote or, or Notion um, have AI functions and you are also able in these apps to summarize documents or format documents. So um, don't be fooled. These are not uh, any Galaxy uh, exclusive features. Um, I mean, besides the, the live translation um, in a phone call, but some, some of these AI functions are already available in third-party apps and in some cases third-party apps um, are actually doing a better job in performing these tasks, but um, I mean they can only uh, get better um, with time. So I really hope that for example also the Magic Editor with Generative Fill and so on will get better over time, but at the moment it's Hmm, meh. Another AI function that is, I have to be honest, is genius is real is, is circle to search. But circle to search is a Google feature, and also the Pixel smartphones will get this feature. So this is had nothing to do with Galaxy um, exclusivity. Um, but circle to search is really awesome. And circle to search is so genius because it works system wide. So let's. Start a YouTube video. Background play is on. And in this YouTube video, there's a doc. And this is a video, right? So I'm in the YouTube app. Then I can launch Circle to Search. I can just press this bar down here. And then it will launch the Google Search. And then I can circle the doc. And the algorithm already selects the part of the image that is relevant. And then you can see it's most likely a cuckapoo. Here it is. Cuckapoo, also known as a, a, a cuckapoo, also known as a cockapoo, is a dog crossbreed bred from cocker spaniel and the poodle. So I know what this dog is. Um, so then, for example, what's this here? What's this smartphone? Launch Google to search. And then you can also draw a line. And already Google found that this is a Google Pixel 8 Pro. Awesome. And what's also cool is that you can add to your search. So let's see. We found Google Pixel 8 Pro and then you can, I can add Mint, the new color, and then it will show me all the results based on what it found via circle to search and the input I gave. And for example, another Example, so let's see, what's this camera? I mean, I know it's a GFX 100 Mark II, but if I don't know it, I can just circle to search and Google says it's a Fujifilm GFX. And this is really awesome. So, and this also works in the browser. So, for example, let's search camera. I mean, I, I'm, now I'm already in the browser, it's not, not so interesting, 
but I can use circle to search to use this one. And then Google finds it's a codec PixPro VPZ2. So you get the idea. This is a really ingenious feature and I hope that this will come to all Android phones. I mean, Google already announced that this will come to um, the Pixel 8 Pro, Pixel 8. I hope that it also will come to the Pixel Fold and to other Android smartphones uh, because this is a feature that is really useful because I, I, when you did this in the past you had to yeah, make a screenshot, download a, um, an, an image, put it into Google Lens and then try to, um, to find. And now, especially as it is system-wide, that's a really cool feature. Yeah, and that's it. These um, were the first impressions after several hours of using the S24 Ultra. I really was on the fence. I didn't know if I wanted to upgrade for my S23 Ultra because the, the upgrades are kind of yeah, evolutionary and not revolutionary. But I have to say, I'm quite happy. I like the new body. I like the flat screen. I like the screen in general with the new glass. I like some of the features they implemented. Um, and so I think for me, it's a, it's a cool upgrade, but um, it's also fair if you are still happy with the S23 Ultra, because for example, especially cameras, there are not many changes. And I, I think I will also do a camera comparison between the S23 Ultra and the S24 Ultra. Um, but for me, and that's personal, it was a good upgrade, especially since I got a good deal via corporate benefits and trade-in. So um, I'm, I'm quite happy um, with this phone and I will use it uh, in situations where my foldables are not suited for, um, like for example, when mountain biking, when I'm out and about and I have to use a device that is tough and uh, can take a beating. I hope this was interesting. Um, hope to see you in one of my next videos. Until then, take care and bye.